Hello there and good morning. Just a few hours ago, our UK Tory Prime Minister grovelled before her EU overlords and meekly accepted yet another Article 50 extension. This one to last until the 31st of October. You know, Halloween. This will give our Remainer establishment a further six and a half months to find another excuse to extend the process or maybe hold a heavily remain-weighted snap referendum or revoke the Article 50 letter so reversing Brexit completely. At the ensuing press conference, Theresa May wouldn't answer questions on potentially resigning over this after her claim in the House of Commons that, quote, As Prime Minister, I am not prepared to delay Brexit any further than the 30th of June. End quote. But she still keeps on plugging that maggot-ridden corpse of a withdrawal agreement UK colony status treaty of hers. Talking to the media, she said that the UK could use a flexible break clause built into the new agreement to leave early, so avoiding EU elections, as long as Parliament passed her hated withdrawal agreement treaty by the 22nd of May. So let's have a look at that timetable. The 22nd of May is just one day short of six weeks away. So, to ratify her deal in a manner that would mean we could leave under her vassalage withdrawal agreement would require the following at a minimum. 1. Agreement on her political declaration across the House of Commons. And this is the bit that the Tory and Labour parties supposedly got together to agree on and are struggling to negotiate right now. How long do you reckon that will take when the fundamental Iron Curtain political differences between left and right get in the way? 2. At the same time, she has to get the House to agree to the 585-page legally binding withdrawal agreement backstop and all, that has been roundly rejected three times already. Are we really going to keep seeing this coming back on a weekly basis? Thirdly, once all that is done, she also has to get the highly contentious Withdrawal Agreement Bill through both Houses of Parliament to royal assent. This brand new Withdrawal Agreement Bill has not even been published yet, and will in all likelihood have to reimpose direct EU control over the UK by actually repealing some of the provisions in the Withdrawal Act that was passed just last year, just so that we can have the implementation period. Something that will be met with heavy resistance from Brexiteers in both the House of Commons and the House of Lords. And she wants to do all of that in six weeks? No, it ain't gonna happen, unless she rips up all the rule books and tries to ram it through like a dictator. And I would not put that past her right now. And all the while MPs will be plotting and manoeuvring for more Brexit-busting ideas and probably soaking up as much parliamentary time as they can in the process. Expect to see more of the Cooper Letwin style of taking control of Parliament, ending up with more rushed, flawed and potentially damaging legislation flying about the place as they try to force more delays, second referendums and revocation on us. All the while, business will face more uncertainty with unneeded costs and our politicians will put Brexit tactics above the need for dealing with education, the NHS, social services and fighting crime. Our PM could have ended all of that a couple of hours ago by declaring we would be leaving on Friday. But she chose not to. And the UK now faces the real prospect of holding EU elections at the end of May, despite Brexit. Now, the establishment players will try to put Leave voters off of voting in both the upcoming local elections and the EU elections because they fear a massive backlash at the ballot box. Do not be tempted by these Remain-backed calls for some sort of voter strike or mass spoiling of ballot papers because that just plays into their hands. 
not voting or spoiling your ballot paper means having no say, so please do not fall for it. Brexiteers and those who believe in true democracy must get to the polling stations in droves and drive home the message by voting UKIP. It is the only weapon we have in the political fight for democracy and freedom. So give them the electoral backlash they deserve. It is the only way to make them listen. So what do you think of our Prime Minister's behaviour? Please share this and comment. And thanks for watching.